டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் ஐ எம் டாக்டர் கே கண்ணன் ப்ரொஃபஸர் மெக்கானிக்கல் இன்ஜினியரிங் அஞ்சலையம்மாள் மகாலிங்கம் இன்ஜினியரிங் காலேஜ் கோயில்வண்ணி ஐ எம் ஹாப்பி டு மீட் யூ அகெயின் இன் தி வீடியோ லெக்சர் இந்த டாபிக் யூபிஎஸ்சி இன்ஜினியரிங் சர்வீஸ் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் சொல்யூஷன் அண்ட் டிஸ்கஷன் ஆன் தி பிரிலிமினரி கொஸ்டின்ஸ் இன் தி சப்ஜெக்ட் தெர்மோடனமிக்ஸ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டேக் ஃபியூ கொஸ்டின்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் தி செகண்ட் லா அண்ட் இட்ஸ் அப்ளிகேஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் ஐ வில் solve the questions question number 1 which of the following device complies with the clausius statement of the second law of thermodynamics the four options are closed cycle gas turbine internal combustion engine steam power plant domestic refrigerator so the classic statement of uh, second law so it says like this it is impossible to construct a device which operating in a cycle will produce no effect other than transfer of heat from a cooler to a hotter body so without any effect it is difficult to transfer heat from a cooler body to hotter body that is the statement the device which is working on classic classier statements of second law is domestic refrigerator the answer to the question is domestic refrigerator The next question a facsius pressure that if it acted on a piston during the entire power stroke would produce the same amount of net work as that produced during the actual cycle is called quasi equivalent pressure mean equivalent pressure mean effective pressure and quasi static pressure so the answer is mean effective pressure so mean effective pressure is defined as the hypothetical pressure which is thought to be acting on the piston throughout the power stroke would produce the same amount of net work as that produced during the actual cycle so mean effective pressure is the hypothetical pressure which we calculate work done divided by the swept volume so that is the answer to the question the next question if the carnot cycle is impractical impracticable because isothermal process is very fast and isentropic process is very slow isothermal process is very slow and isentropic process is very fast isothermal process and isentropic process is very fast isothermal process and isentropic process is very slow the correct answer is isothermal process is very slow and isentropic process is very fast so iso- isothermal process constant temperature heat addition process it should be very slow to add the heat add the heat to the air at the constant temperature and uh, isentropic process it should be fast if it is slow there will be more frictional losses so combination of these two uh, processes slow isothermal process and fast isentropic process is not possible so that is why the carnot cycle is impracticable next question practically it is not feasible to design an engine which closely follows the carnot cycle for the following reason transfer of heat energy at constant temperature is very difficult to achieve isentropic process are very fast processes it makes the use of smaller pressure ratio thermal efficiency is not a function of source and the sink temperature which are the above reasons are correct 1 and 2 2 and 3 3 and 4 and 1 and 4 the correct answer is 1 and 2 transfer of heat energy at constant temperature is very difficult to achieve isentropic process are very fast processes other two reasons are not correct next question consider the following statement free expansion of gas gas slow heating of oil from a constant temperature source evaporation of water at its saturation temperature by a source at the same temperature isentropic compression of ideal gas which of these process processes are irreversible so 1 and 2 2 1 3 3 and 4 and 1 and 4 the answer is 1 and 2 so free expansion of gases is irreversible slow heating of oil at constant temperature is also irreversible next question consider the following conditions for the reversibility of a cycle if p and t of the pressure and temperature of the working substance must not differ appreciably from those of the surrounding at any state in the process all the processes taking place in the cycle must be extremely slow 
the working part of the engine must be friction free so which of these condition are required for reversibility of the cycle so all the three all the three are required for achieving reversibility of a cycle so the pressure and temperature of the working surfaces must not differ appreciably from those of the surrounding at the same state in the process all the process in the must be extremely slow and uh, it should be a friction free all the parts should be friction free next question there are two statements state number 1 a thermal energy reservoir is a system that always remain at constant temperature even though the heat is added to or removed from it a thermal reservoir that supplies heat energy is called a sink and and that absorbs the heat energy is called a source so there are four statements both the statement 1 and 2 are individually true and the statement true is correct explanation of the statement 1 both 1 and 2 statement 1 and 2 are individually true but the statement 2 is not the correct explanation of the statement 1 so statement 1 is true but the statement true is 2 is false statement 1 is false but the statement 2 is true so looking at the statement statement 1 is true a thermal energy reservoir is a system that always remains at constant temperature even though the heat is added added to or removed from it so this is the correct definition of a thermal reservoir statement 1 is correct true statement true a thermal reservoir that the supply heat energy is called a sink and absorb heat energy is called the source that is wrong so supply heat energy is called a source and absorb heat energy is the sink so the correct answer is statement 1 is true and the statement 2 is false Next question is a similar type of question. Statement 1. Class S inequality is valid for all cycles, reversible or irreversible, including refrigeration cycle. Statement 2. Classic sta class S statement is a negative statement which has no proof. Uh, the correct, uh, the, you select the answer. There are four statements. Both the statement 1 and statement 2 are individually true and the statement 2 is correct explanation of statement 1. Both the statement 1 and 2 are individually true, but the statement 2 is not the correct explanation of statement 1. Statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false. Statement 1 is false but statement 2 is true. So, class S inequality is, a, is valid for all cycles, reversible or irreversible including the free cycle. Class S statement is a negative statement which has no proof. So, statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false. So, class S statement is not a negative statement and it has, it has a proof. The next question. A researcher claims that he has developed an engine while which while working between the source and the sink temperatures of 377 degrees Celsius and 27 degrees Celsius rejects only 50 percentage of absorbed heat. What will be the engine will be? An impossible engine, a sterling engine, a reversible engine, a practical engine. The answer is a practical engine. So, we will see how. The source temperature is 377 degrees Celsius, 650 Kelvin. Sink temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. 300 Kelvin and the heat rejected is 50 percentage of heat absorbed. So, point Q2 equal to 0 0.5 times of Q1. Theoretical efficiency of the engine. So, eta I C Carnot cycle equal to 1 minus T2 by T1, 1 minus 300 by 650 equal to 0 0.538. Actual efficiency of the engine, eta A equal to 1 minus Q2 by Q1, 1 minus 0.5 Q1 divided by Q1 equal to 0 0.5. The actual efficiency is less than the theoretical efficiency, so it is a practical engine. A Carnot engine receives 100 kJ of heat and at 600 Kelvin, the heat rejected is 300 Kelvin, the displacement volume is 0 0.2 meter cube, the mean effective pressure is 2 bar, 2.5 bar, 3 bar and 3.5 bar, the answer is 2.5 bar, so we will see how in the next slide. So, heat supplied 100 kilojoules, Q1 equal to 100 kilojoules, temperature of heat supply T1 equal to 600 Kelvin, temperature of heat rejection T2 equal to 300 Kelvin, sept volume is 0 0.2 meter cube. Work done of the Carnot cycle. So, efficiency is 1 minus C2 by T1 equal to 1 minus 300 by 600 equal to 0 0.5. Eta is also defined as W by Q1, work done divided by the heat supplied which is 0.5. So, work done equal to 0 0.5 to 150 kilojoules. So, mean of the pressure equal to, mean of the pressure is W divided by sub 2 volume, work done divided by the sub 2 volume. So, 50 divided by 0 0.2 equal to 250 kilopascal, which is 2.5 bar. So, the answer is 2.5 bar. 
The next question, a reversible engine works between temperature limits of 6 to 60 degrees Celsius and 60 degrees Celsius. To improve the performance, we have, we have to raise the source temperature to 300 Kelvin, lower the sink temperature to 30 degrees Celsius, insulate the engine, none of the above. The answer is lower the sink temperature to 30 degrees Celsius. So, we will see how in the next slide. So, efficiency of the original engine, Kita Carnot's engine, Carnot efficiency is 1 minus 2 by 2 1, 1 minus 60 plus 273 divided by 260 plus 273 equal to 0 0.375. Option A. Option A is raise the temperature 300 degree Celsius, source temperature to 300 degree Celsius. So, eta C equal to again efficiency equal to 1 minus 2 by 2 1 which is 1 minus 60 plus 273 divided by 300 plus 273 is 0 0.42. Option B is decreasing the sink temperature to 30 degree Celsius. So, again Carnot efficiency 1 minus 2 by 2 1 equal to 1 minus 30 plus 273 divided by 260 plus 273 it is 0 0.437. Both option A and option B both are increasing the efficiency, but the better efficiency is achieved by option B. So, decreasing the sink temperature to 30 degrees Celsius. Both option increases the efficiency, but the better value is option B. So, decreasing the sink temperature will give the better efficiency. Next question, a Carnot engine operates between 37 degrees Celsius and 347 degrees Celsius. If the engine produces 620 kilojoules of work, the entropy change during the heat addition is 1 kilojoules per Kelvin, 2 kilojoules per Kelvin, 3 kilojoules per Kelvin, 4 kilojoules per Kelvin. So, the answer is 2 kilojoules per Kelvin. So, we will see how in the next slide. Temperature of heat addition 347 degrees Celsius, 620 Kelvin. Temperature of heat rejection 37 degrees Celsius, 310 Kelvin. Work done equal to 620 kilojoules. Efficiency of the cycle, eta equal to 1 minus 2 2 by T1 equal to 1 minus 310 by 620 equal to 0.5. Heat supplied Q1 equal to W work done divided by eta. So, 620 divided by 0.5 equal to 1240 kilojoules. Entropy change during the heat addition process delta S equal to Q1 by T1 1240 divided by 620 equal to 2 kilojoules per Kelvin. That is the answer to the question. The next question the engine and refrigerator they are connected. The power produced by the engine, work produced by the engine is given as the input for the refrigerator. The heat supplied to the engine is Q1, heat rejected is Q2 and for the refrigerator, the heat extracted Q3 is the heat supply, Q4 is the heat rejection. Heat, ab heat absorbed is Q3, heat rejected is Q4 to the surrounding. In the figure shown above, E is the heat engine with efficiency of 0 0.4 and R is the refrigerator. If Q2 plus Q4 equal to 3 times of Q1, so Q2 plus Q4 equal to 3 times of Q1, the COP of the refrigerator will be. So, you have to calculate COP of the refrigerator. So, the answer is 5. So, we will see how in the next slide. So, look at the heat engine. So, this is the same diagram. What is given? Q2 plus Q4 equal to 3 times of Q1. The efficiency of the heat engine eta equal to 1 minus Q2 by Q1 equal to 0 0.4. So, Q2 equal to 0 0.4 times of Q1. Again, eta equal to efficiency equal to W by uh, Q1, work done divided by the heat supplied, which is again 0 0.4, uh, W work done equal to 0 0.41, 4 times of Q. So, for a refrigerator, W plus Q3 equal to Q4. So, W equal to Q1 minus Q2. So, work done equal to Q1, Q1 minus Q2 plus Q3 equal to Q4. Rearranging Q1 plus Q3 equal to Q3 plus Q2. So, it is given Q2 plus Q4 equal to 3 times of Q1. So, Q4 plus Q2 equal to 3 times of Q1. So, Q1 plus Q3 equal to 3 times of Q1. Q3 equal to 2 times of Q1. So, COP of the refrigerator, COP equal to Q3 divided by W. So, Q3 equal to 2 times of Q1. W equal to 0 0.4 times of Q1. So, Q1 is getting cancelled. 2 by 0 0.4 equal to 5. So, the COP of the refrigerator is 5. We stop here. So, these are all the books I have written in mechanical engineering subject. Uh, it is available. You can refer to it for theoretical part of the uh, subject. I uploaded the 
video lecture of all the subjects in the YouTube channel. You subscribe the channel, use the video for your better learning. Thank you for watching. Please post your comments on the comments box. You can contact me uh, for any doubt on the subject through my mail ID or WhatsApp number. We'll meet again in another video in the solution of second law of thermodynamics questions from the engineering service examination. Until then, bye.